2020 marked a turning point in the lives of many. The COVID-19 pandemic reshaped operations worldwide. In the sphere of education, it may have reshaped delivery, but work towards fulfilling the mission continued. This was definitely the case here at the Aaron Gilmore School for the Blind. We're going to take a look for the next few minutes into the world of staff and students here at this school. Established April 15, 1949, the Aaron Gilmore School for the Blind has for decades acted as a place of solace and active learning for students who are visually challenged. Currently, 13 students are enrolled at the school with 80% of them totally blind, while the other 20% experience low vision. Principal Nataki Beckford takes us back to March 2020 at the onset of COVID-19. In the beginning, the greatest challenge was how are we going to get across the same um, way we taught face to face? How are we going to do that virtually, that effective teaching? And so the first thing that happened is we got together with our partners, Salvation Army, of course, the Ministry of Education. And so we had to make sure that we had the capabilities to pull off the virtual. And so the Ministry of Education came in. They totally um, um, updated the school, the internet system. Um, they provided tablets for all of our teachers. We really appreciate that. Salvation Army bought um, laptop computers and tablets for all of the students. Our teachers came in, you know, signing in, and then they would log on to their classes. We'd have our devotions virtually. Um, and we get to, I get to greet the students, you know, make announcements, have a devotional time, and then they would go off to virtual classes. All right, and after that, that day we would end probably at like about one, and then the students, you know, they were free to go. That would be lunch, and they wouldn't have that last period. That's the virtual time. Once they came into school, it was slightly different. Um, they came in, we did devotions, and they had their classes. But because of COVID, we had to be so careful. And you know, they're visually impaired. A lot of them have comorbidities. And so we had to sanitize as they came in, taking their temperature, sanitizing their hands, um, showed them around the school, telling them where the hand sanitizers were. And you know, they are blind or they have low vision, but they know the school. They were able to walk around and say, this is where the hand sanitizers are. And so they got used to it gradually. And we tried to keep them one place, and the teachers moved to them, so we wouldn't have to keep sanitizing from classroom to classroom. Unlike conventional schools, the Aaron Gilmore School is not constituted by specific grade levels. Rather, it is divided into three broad sections, primary, junior, and senior high. Junior high student LeBron Minnes tells us about his experience having been a student at the school from the very first level. They did a really good job and I want them to continue doing what they're doing. They are awesome. Um, I really appreciate them. They have been a strong impact on my life. And what about national examinations? Are these students up to the challenge? Well, for years, students have been sitting national examinations and many have been successful at passing them. Here's how LeBron preps himself for these crucial exams. Mainly I study and I ask my teachers questions that I don't know the answers to. So I get to learn more about that subject. So when it's time for BJCs, I just go up there and, and show off my best self. And on that mission to ensure all students maximize their potential, teacher of a multi-challenged group, Alba Chamayo, is determined to work on just that. And the COVID-19 pandemic, of course, try to interfere with that mission. But Ms. Tamayo says adjustments were made and the learning process continues for her four students. During this period, we've been doing more theory than practice. Actually, between, I mean, uh, through the computer, it's so difficult to do more practice, especially with my students. So we do more uh, theory, yes, like more language, more science, more basic. Uh, subjects, than daily living skills, than uh, sensory training, than orientation and mobility. Um, I mean, my students are so smart, they can get, I mean, everything I, uh, I direct 
those subjects for um, I mean they can get everything a small concepts a small skills you think they are small but for them are really really big are, are really important you know so if I focus my math for example talking about coins about money I go that I mean I I um, direct that topic to real things to real uh, um, um, facts that they are facing right now okay we need the money but for to save and um, we real I mean we need to save money this time we need to understand why we need to earn money and why we need to save money I focus my topic depending on the situation my goals are um, to help them to be more independent more and more independent and as use as well as um, as useful useful and, and effective meanwhile mrs charmaine clark teacher and former student of the school is pleased with the progress of her class of three striving students all with low vision the students are very enthusiastic and they're very eager to learn I noticed that, and they're very talented and very gifted. They, they, I mean, they sing and they sound so beautiful. Naturally, it's beautiful when they sing. I noticed they play a lot of musical instruments here, so the students are very, very gifted and very dedicated to their education. I have to make the writing bigger, and I have to make it bolder. Right, and I ensure that I always tell them, I say, now if you cannot see it, let me know, I'll make it bigger. I even zoom the screen in, big enough for them to be able to read and see the pictures. As human beings from time to time, we all need a bit of motivation to go on. While school counselor Jan Miller shares the strategies and initiatives used during the last school year to nudge the students to success. So I'm new at the school. I was posted here in November. I love working at the school. I wanted to build a rapport with the staff and the students, so that was part of my goal for this school year. Also, I wanted to identify the students' strengths, their talents, and also to see what, what are their goals. Also, I wanted to um, get community partners on board. Um, to let them know that, hey, we are here. I, I really was passionate about getting community support. I also wanted to create an awareness that we are here. You know, we're gonna have students needing summer jobs, and when they leave school, they also need jobs. And so I also focus on career, entrepreneurship, and um, just job skills. And so that was one of the things I focus on this school year, being at this school. Um, the initiatives that were started were the attendance award that was started in January. The, just some challenges with students coming to classes and so I wanted to address that. And so we got some wonderful prizes, some wonderful uh, persons on board to assist with that. And also we started the JA club and so that was a wonderful um, experience for the school. So we also had the student empowerment sessions. That one I think I enjoyed most because we brought persons who were blind or had visual challenges in and the students could identify with them because we have students who are fully blind we have students who have visual challenges. And so that one was really, really impactful. Just hearing their stories and persons. We also had persons from abroad who were uh, former students here, and so that was really a uh, successful initiative. And just how much of an impact did these initiatives have on the students at the Aaron Gilmore School? It was, it was um, great actually. I actually enjoyed it because it showed me how to invest in um, and save my money and manage it better without having to. Um, without having to waste, you know. Adopting the words of a former U.S. state governor, at the end of the day, the most overwhelming key to a child's success is the positive involvement of parents. With that said, Mrs. Clark offers this advice to parents of children with disabilities. 
seek help. We have a lot of professionals here, a lot of um, speech therapists, ophthalmologists, psychologists. We have a lot of those over here in, the, in Nassau. Right here in Nassau, we have a lot of them who are very good. So they, once they acknowledge that their child has an issue, then they can seek that help from those different professionals. And when that help is sought, former blind student and now first class educator at the school, Kevin Cartwright would tell you that disabilities are only opportunities to successfully explore one's great abilities. Cartwright holds a bachelor's degree and is currently pursuing a master's in education. Here's his advice to students with visual challenges. Know that there is a system of support here that is more than capable um, to provide you the necessary instruction and guidance to prepare yourself to take the examinations. You know, I too was once where you were, and uh, it's important for you to, you know, to think of yourself, to think positively about yourselves, and to work towards achieving the full range of your goals, aspirations, and dreams and not allow your disability or your blindness or visual impairment to be a setback, but rather to be an opportunity for you to embrace that challenge and to overcome that challenge because blindness is not the end of the world. That's the way I see it. It's an opportunity for you to do more and to achieve more and with God's help, you can overcome and do all things. Helen Keller said, Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. The staff of the Aaron Gilmore School for the Blind makes an appeal to community partners. We are thinking long term. You know, what's gonna be, once they leave, we want them to not just stay home and don't do anything. And so we're trying as much as possible to reach out to persons in our area, in the community and in the country. Give these students an opportunity. They can do the job. Sometimes we look at their limitations and look at them, oh, they can't see, you know, what can they do? But they can do just as much as the sighted persons. I want to reiterate that I want our country um, to realize, to give our students an opportunity. They're blind, they're visually impaired, but they are intelligent, they are able to accomplish just what a sighted person is able to accomplish. We have the technology that can assist them to do many things that our sighted persons can do. I encourage those people out here, out of the school, come visit the school, come see the children, how smart they are, how useful and effective uh, are members of this society. They need the assistance of those persons out there. It's um, vital that the public at large, join us as partners for No Man is an Island. That level of participatory collaboration and interconnectedness that is shared between the community of persons with disabilities and the quote-unquote able-bodied persons within the community is vital to um, progress. You know, we want to we want persons to see us as capable, contributing, functionally independent individuals who are able to give to the building of society, but we need um, the community at large to be a part of the process so that we can work together to achieve empowerment. And with that empowerment, we are able to do more. Success requires a team effort, and we reach success when each citizen is afforded an equitable opportunity at making a positive contribution to the world. For Red Talk, I'm Adama Williams. Want to stay in the know? Subscribe. Text 819-BMOE. That's 819-2663. Remember to like and subscribe to our social media platforms.